Oh, there you are. Oh, how are you all today? Welcome to Integrative Preparedness. I'm Steve Smith, and I want to talk about 50 Shades of Preparedness. Ooh, spicy, huh? For those of you who know what that reference references. <laughs> no, we're not going to talk about this. This is a family show, but it kind of it popped into my head when I was thinking about what I was going to talk about today. Uh, before we get to that, I just put up one on the American Reversion channel about is it time to take your kids and your grandkids out of public schools don't jump on and say it's been time yes it's i discuss in detail what you might want to think about and we've done both we've had homeschooled and we've public schooled so if you have an opinion on that uh go over on american reversion and talk about it there Please don't just leave a comment this. I mean, okay, if you want to, but whatever. Okay, before we get into that, I got up, I went up to mail a bunch of books out today, went up to the post office, and finally remembered to check my P.O. box, which I don't do, and I, I, I was proved, I, I discovered that I need to check it a lot more often. Uh, but people don't don't order books from me much anymore through through the mail because it's it's all done through the website. And so I, you know, I used to just check it religiously because I wanted, you know, needed to pick up the order. Wow, that wind. I hope you all can hear me. Can you hear me? I don't know. Well, I'll just keep talking just in case you can and in case that wind dies down. But anyway, uh, so I went up there and I checked and, uh, whoa, well, I, I will check faithfully from now on. I'll just say that. I found an order in there from March. I had not realized that I hadn't checked it since March. So if that's you, I'm sorry. The, I'll, I'll get your book out to you. Uh, but like I say, everything's done through the website now. Uh, Stonemont.us down below. It's down in the in the information box. But <clears throat> what I pulled out of there, a big, big envelope from Hondo Bob. <clears throat> I almost said his real name. Don't worry. Don't worry, Hondo. If I had said it, I would have scrapped this one, you know. And, uh, but Hondo Bob, you all know him. He's one of our real brains. Over, well, no, if you're on YouTube, you might not. He's one of our real brains over on the Patreon channel. Our, one of our experts on EMP and electronics and science stuff and in military intelligence and all things military, all sorts of stuff. I love reading Hondo's stuff. Uh, and I, even though I'm not sitting in my office now, if you've noticed the lanterns that are always behind me, he's the one who made those and sent them to me. Uh, but I love listening to Hondo, like I love listening to Mike Hoskins and some other people, because even though I don't understand half of what they say, it makes me feel smarter just having heard it, right? Well, so I get, I, I pull out of, I got to put on my peepers because there's something smaller to read here. And I see that uh, he sent me some things. He's made up some bumper stickers for the, uh, don't worry, we're going to get to 50 Shades of Preparedness, uh, for the election season. And so he sent me a couple of each of these. John Wick for president. What does it say? Who's going to stop me? Who's going to stop? Yeah, who's going to stop me? <laughs> so he says, hey, uh, the, you can peel them off. They're magnetic. You put them on. It won't hurt to paint on your vehicle. And so at the end... Of, or, you know, at the end of the election season, or if you're going somewhere to where there's a lot of libs around, right? Uh, you might not want to use it, put this on your car. Uh, so you got that one. And then uh, my favorite, I think, for those of you old enough or cool enough to remember who Snake Plissken is or was, Snake Plissken for president, a snake you actually want in the White House, right? You remember that? What a great movie. Escape from New York. One of the real early dystopian movies, right? Remember? Call me Snake. <laughs> I think I said on the other channel, one of the other guys, when I was undercover narcotics working the bike gangs, and uh, we each had a, a, you know, a cool handle that we went by. Uh, I wasn't Snake, but another guy was Snake. I won't tell you what I was. That's a secret. And then one more for the preppers. He says, where we're going, we don't need roads. <laughs> I love that. I love it. Hondo, thank you so much. I'm going to. Those are, by the way, I'm just getting ready. As you know, I'm putting. And for the guy that says, you talk four minutes and you haven't even got to the point. Well, this is the point. 
because I like to talk to the people here. We have a wonderful group of people here on this channel. By the way, welcome. Three, more than 3,000 new subscribers in the last week and a half. Welcome to all of you. It's great to have you here. And sometimes we just chat about this. Okay. Sometimes I'm a little more energetic than others. But uh, So anyway, uh, I'm you know that I'm getting my office to my new office together. I haven't gotten everything together yet. My next step is to uh, put together the patch board. I'll be putting these bumper stickers up there somewhere too. Um, because people have sent me so many patches, first responders, military, all that. So that's the next thing I'm, I'm getting ready to do is putting together a patch board to put up behind my desk. And uh, Hondo has sent me a bunch of his patches. He's got a lot, of, a lot of cool patches. He had quite a career. Okay, so thanks, Hondo. Now let's get to the point here. What, what am I talking about, 50 Shades of Preparedness? Well, this came about from a couple of things. Uh, I was just writing this morning or maybe I should start with Mike Hoskins comment no I won't let me back up I was just talking I was writing today on the seventh book it looks like it's going to be ready and well it'll be done in a couple of weeks and then it'll go through the editing process and then sent off to the printer and then it will be available and I will let you know but I'm going to say well within two months excuse me I'm talking too much I need coffee Well, but you're not talking about the things that I want to hear, says the guy who wants to hear about <coughs> Fifty Shades of Preparedness. Uh, so I'm writing a, 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 a chapter about a, and it includes a character that I think is going, who I think is going to become many people's, one of their favorite characters. Her name's Martina Lopez. And she, I can't give the story away. But she makes the statement about the fact, she says, she sees things in black and white, but she's able to function well within the many shades of gray because she knows that's, I don't need these on anymore, because she knows that's where most people live, right? In the many shades of gray. And that's, that's what made me think about that. Uh, and so we're getting into, we're going to be getting into some, some things, some of my old stuff, into covert and clandestine things and interesting stuff. And so that, then I remember Mike Hoskins had made a statement, one of our, our other highly esteemed patrons over on the Patreon channel. Did I tell you all that the, the link to the Patreon channel is right down below in the information section right above where you can order the books and things. So if you're not with us, love to have you. A lot of good stuff over there. And different people. Some of the same people, but, but there's once somebody goes over to Patreon, they pretty much just comment on Patreon. And that's what makes that such a cool place, is that we have so many of our really smart, smart people over there. And it's a great place. And he had said the other day that, in, and I forget what which video, or maybe it was just the daily thought, he said, a true prepper is prepared to live well in the 19th century or the 21st century. Right. And I think it was in response to one of my videos about the importance of keeping up on uh, technology. Right. Uh, very, very often, you know, uh, people trap themselves, a lot of people in the preparedness world, uh, you know, they become consumed with this idea of building one more lean-to shelter, right? And, uh, I mean, is, is that really the future that you want? Now, it's a future you should be able to survive in if necessary. But is it really the future that you are preparing for? And I hope not. And so, this idea of, like Mike expressed, you should be preparing to live and live well no matter what the situation is. If everything goes down, if the grid goes down and cannibals are running around and, and slavers are running around like in my books. By the way, in those, book number seven, you're going to find out what happens to the slavers. Am I giving too much away? That's all I'm going to say. 
and everything in the world, right? People chasing you, wanting to eat you, and all. It could be that. You, you need to be prepared for that. You need to be able to feed yourself and water yourself and protect yourself and shelter yourself and, and everything. And then you need to be able to live well right now. You know, so many people, I think, are, are, are um, well, they're sacrificing their life today with this idea that everything's going to fall apart and uh, they're going to have to go back and run out in the woods and build their lean-to or their super shelter or whatever, right? And uh, while, while investment and looking to the future and planning for the future does mean that you sacrifice some things today in order to prepare for the future, what you really need to be doing is increasing your ability to live well now while building for the future, right? And then you also need to be preparing yourself to live well no matter what happens in the future. What if we go to a CBDC? Okay, and for those of you who may not be aware of what that is, it's a central bank digital currency. It is the complete control of all currency by a central bank, by the, the government. Okay, it is the complete control of your ability to do business with anybody else. Well, not exactly. Okay, what if that happens? Are you going to be able to function? either within or outside that system. There will be those who say, that's the mark of the beast, and I won't take the mark of the beast. I understand that. If that's if I feel that that's the mark of the beast, neither will I. Okay. There's been other things that people thought were the mark of the beast. I'll just say that. Okay. Don't want to be unkind here with anyone, but, you know, I mean, really, think about it, and don't, don't just, you know, knee-jerk into emotional responses on things. Look at it discerningly. If that happens, you need to be able to continue to function in that society or outside that society. I've talked about this. I've talked about how does organized crime do it. I've talked about And, you know, people used to get mad at me when I'd say, here, let me tell you how the mafia did it. And they'd say, I can't believe that you're telling us to be like the mafia. Well, I just... I'm not telling you to be like the Mafia in all ways. I'm telling you that they developed some good ways to be able to function in a society that was very oppressive to them and which they did not believe. They didn't trust the government. Tell me something. Do you share anything with the Mafia? They didn't trust the government. Do you? Well, you must be Mafia then, huh? No. What I was talking about is be, being able to develop ways to continue to, to live a good life under an oppressive force. You need to be able to do that. Now you can say, or some will say, well I'm just going to run off into the, you know, whatever. I'm going to live like the last of the dog men. Did you all see that movie, Last of the Dog Men? It's a good movie. Tom Berenger and something else. It, it, cool, cool concept, but totally unrealistic. It would never happen. Okay. It's kind of like Galt's Gulch, right, in, in Atlas Shrugged. Uh, be nice, be cool, but it's not real. And you have to deal with reality. You have to deal with the world you have. So when you take those extremes, you take everything falling apart, and you got to go run to the woods, and hopefully you're not running out and building a lead to it. Hopefully you have some place to go that you can start over again. Much like Stonemont, much like my books. Uh, if you want to know what I consider to be the perfect solution, it's my books. Somebody said, by the way, and if, you, if you're not familiar with, with me, I'm the one that wrote the Stonemont series. I had somebody, a, a very interesting person, had been a, a subscriber for a long time and, uh, and over with us on Patreon, but he, he still occasionally uh, comments on YouTube. And he says, I finally broke down. This is after a couple of years. I finally broke down and bought 
your books. He says, I'm just reading the first one. And he says, wow, I can't believe I waited this long. And you're right. You don't cover much at all on the videos that you do in your books. And for the guy that says, well, why don't you cover it on? Because I can't. I can make videos for 100 years and never even scratch the surface of what I've already written about in my books. So if you want to know what I consider to be the perfect plan, read the Stonemont series. The links are down below. They're my books. I don't apologize for trying to sell them, although some people want me to. Some little commies jump on here and say, if you really wanted to help people, this all came off of my, of my complimenting Canadian prepper. You know, I say, crying out loud, the guy's built a great business. What are you, what are you jealous of? And that's why you, you harp on him. I says, I write my books, uh, and I sell them to make money. And you know what somebody actually said? They said, I was so disappointed to hear that you, s you write your books in order to make money. I'm a writer. I, I took money when I was a police officer, too. I, I tried to help people, but every time my paycheck came, I took it, right? How about you? <laughs> So that's another shot for any of those idiots that are still with us. Uh, but that's my, if you want my perfect plan, that's it. And the link's down below. By the way, if you do order my books, you can get them through Amazon. Uh, and they get them to you quick. But I love it when you get it directly from me through our website, stonemont.us. That's down below. Then I get to sign it for you and put a little note in it for you and everything. And I love doing that because I, I love my relationship with my readers just like with my viewers here. But you need to be able to live well. You need, to be, you need to prepare so that you're able to live well. At either extreme, running back to the woods, or complete control of everything, and at every point on the spectrum between those two you can't see me out here but I'm I'm doing this with my hands between those two extremes those 50 shades of preparedness there will be some who will say well if it gets that bad I don't want to be here okay well that's your choice but if you feel that you do want to be here you do want to stay alive you still want to be here with your children and your grandchildren and and live that one more day that god has given you then you need to be prepared to live and we don't know what that's going to take we don't know what's going to happen but we do know that as we prepare we're going to be in better shape to deal with whatever comes along, right? Because the more self-sufficient we are, the less we're at the mercy of the outside forces. As, as I talk about the whole concept of integrative preparedness, is that you integrate everything so that everything that you do not only prepares you for the future, but improves your life right now and enables you to live well completely separate from those external systems over which you have little or no control. So when you think about preparedness, think about, don't just think about the extremes. Try not to, to, to settle on a favorite thing that you think will happen. And it's easy to do. A lot of people do that. Well, I'm, I, I'm sure that it's going to be a world war. I'm sure that it's going to be a civil war. Well, I'm sure that it's going to be a this. I'm sure it's going to be a that. I don't know. You know. And I've thought about this for a long time. And for somebody who's sure, I don't know, maybe they can see into the future, but I can't, and probably you can't either. Uh, you can't be sure of anything. You can be sure of, of, of one thing. You can be sure of the love of God, two things. And uh, you can be sure that uh, your efforts to prepare to be self-sufficient will never be wasted. So, how about that? So, I'll leave with you with that. Uh, remember that we prepare well today in order to live well tomorrow. And uh, get out there and do something so that no matter what shade of gray you find yourself on, you're ready to live well. You all have a good day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.